Sabbath, everyone. Yeah, then, uh, I must say the voice is not so well, but I'm going to try to do the best that I can. And, uh, she can't turn on with us this day, so. Spirit of the living God, all afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, all afresh. Ah 
Brother Livingston is doing good, Amen. and he almost looked like I'm yes. purple, but I have to break a little. I have a little token for the ladies. All right. And listen, I said ladies, because as long as you are 20 to 1 up, let me see ladies then we're 20 to 1 up. You have reached 22? Oh my gosh. Really? Right, so here is it now. Oh, we don't have. You're 42. We don't reach 26 yet, sister. So you're 41. So the two in a hit, so you don't forget none. <laughs> All right. So as long as you are 22 and over, yes. you're gonna receive one of these today, as a token of the woman ministry Amen. love and so i want you to wear it proudly because as from today and onwards yes, we are gonna ignite our prayer life Amen. all right meanwhile brother livingston continue to sing brother Yoart and brother shaw yes. will do the noble thing yes. to pin the ladies and so i ask 
Brother Shaw to pin all the quiestas. All right. And I ask Brother Ewart to go down in the aisle. And I ask, sir, make sure you know people they age, you know. <laughs> All right. All right. Only you are holy. Only you are holy. Only you are holy.
blessed Savior is worthy to be praised. Yeah, Jesus, blessed Savior, yeah, he is worthy to be praised. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Yes, I surrender all to you. Everything I give. myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to each and every one of you back to church. Another Sabbath day of rest. 
today, as we all know, is Women's Day of Prayer. So not only Women's Day, it's Women's Day of Prayer. So from the, for the entire day, it will be prayer-based. So I want to say welcome to everyone in the house of the Lord. Welcome to those who are watching and listening online. Welcome to... If we have any visitors, welcome to Mr. Pine <coughs> in the house. <coughs> welcome. Um, anybody else? Bianca and this lady at the back, welcome to you. Um, if I'm leaving anybody out, you are welcome and stay welcome. Remember that God welcomes you also. So... As the new month begins, may it be as bright and colorful as you all are looking today. For so, the announcements and upcoming events are notice, our notices are as follows. Okay, Sunday and Wednesday night meeting are on schedule. Remember that the cruise trip fees are, um, are to be sent in to Sister Heather. She's collecting the fees for the cruise trip for those who gave in their name. So if you don't know about the cruise trip, we'll be having a cruise trip in May. And the children and adults are free to attend. Uh, the date is in May. May 19, yes, adults $8,000 and children $6,000, okay. So for all who haven't known by now, Sister Love had a very successful surgery and she is now home resting and recovering and I'm sure she's giving God thanks for all the answered prayers. And Sister Hay will be going in for her surgery. She's in the hospital already, but she will be going in for her surgery tomorrow. And may we just continue to leave her, place her in God's hands that she will have a safe procedure as well. The health team or department are asked to meet with Sister Peso after divine service. The department persons include Brother Livingston, Sister Campbell, Sister Ferguson, Sister Love, Sister Lumley, Sister Lonely, and Sister Russell. And the Pathfinders are also asked to meet with Sister Peso after lunch. So the health team should meet after divine service and the Pathfinder persons should meet after lunch. And the adventurers as well should meet with. Okay, I can't take that. That it's a bit confusing. All right. Anyways, um, that is it for the announcements, as I have here. And last but not least. Oh, sorry, one more. Youth Day is March 16, and the Youth Week of Prayer is also from March 16, and it ends on March 23. So you will receive further information regarding if you will be having night services for the Youth Week of Prayer. And last but not least, we want to wish the shepherd of the Strapbogie flock a happy birthday which is Elder Prendigast. He celebrated his birthday yesterday, and we want to say happy belated birthday, Elder. And you know we're going to give him his birthday song. Even if he got it from his family, the church will be giving his birthday song specially to him today. So after three, we will sing the birthday song. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear elder, happy birthday to you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, happy birthday. Oh, oh, the. <laughs> Just kidding. 
our closing our closing thought for Women's Day. According to the team, ignite your prayer life. A consistent prayer life deepens your relationship with God. Just like with friends, you become closer to God when you talk with him. God instructs us to pray without ceasing. Without prayer, your relationship with God would be lifeless. So enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, church. Sound like you're a dead man. Happy Sabbath, church. God has been awesome, isn't that? And he has been so wonderful to us throughout the week. Let us give him a praise. Let everybody, amen. Praise the Lord. Church is now called to worship. Oh, praise the Lord, all he nations. Praise him, all he people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. Gloria Patrick. Praise God. Standing and turn your hymn. No, sorry. Let us pray. Eternal Father, which art in heaven, we give you thanks once more, Lord, for your mercies towards us. Lord, you are a wonderful God. You are the great Redeemer, and we are thankful for who you are. Even when we fail you, Lord, you never give up on us. Lord, we are thankful for this opportunity where we can come to praise your name. But as all of us women now gather, Lord, to take over this service, Lord, we pray that self will be put aside. And all that we have done up here, Lord, will be done to thy name and in glory. Amen. Bless this service, Lord, and bless the one that will be leading out in the divine service. Take full control of her as you present your words to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 569. Pass me not, O gentle Savior.
singing plays a very important part in our worship. Without singing, our worship will be dead. And today we have a beautiful group that's in purple. They are ready to bless our heart with a special song. Let us give them our undivided attention as they present a song in message to us. ready to meet him? Let us prepare to meet him. I now invite the deacons to come forward to receive the tithes and offering. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Proverbs 3 verse 9. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your mighty name. Again, Lord, we approach your mercy seat, giving you thanks for spiritual our life when we can come to worship you in this sanctuary another Sabbath. Lord, we have worked during the course of this week, and now, Lord, we are here to present whatever you have blessed us with. Lord, we pray that it will go to the furtherance of your cause. Bless everyone who have to give, and even those who don't have to give, Lord, I know the blessing will be bestowed upon them. Continue to be with us as we worship you throughout today. In your precious name, amen.
rise and step inside And do not be like us Who have shown their lovely chances away yes, Give what you have And the Lord will give you more Give what you have There's better things in store If you give what you have open heaven's door give what you have yes I am blessed oh yes I am blessed every day of my life I am blessed when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest Good morning, church. Good morning. I invite all able-bodied person who is able to stand to stand at this time and turn your Bibles to Second Peter, chapter one, and I will be reading verses one through to four in your hearing. That is Second Peter. The chapter is 1, and I'll read verses 1 through to 4. And it says, Simon Peter, a servant and an, um, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that obtain like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these he might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through loss. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to tune prayerfully. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Your grace and mercy as we kneel, brought me through. I'm leaving this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your Father, the great El Shaddai, 
the one who says I am that I am, the one who is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who has the power to break every chain, the one who created us as your people in your image and after your very likeness. We come to give you the praise. We come to give you the honor. We come to give you the glory. The call has come to us today to ignite our prayer life. This is not only a very pertinent statement but it is a statement that calls us or is calling us to consciousness. It is a statement that is saying to us that we should be on fire. And so, Lord, as my mind reflect in the day of all, when you touch Isaiah with that special anointing, he was able to see you high and lifted up. He was able to hear from you. He was able to make himself available and said, here I am, Lord, send me. I remember in the time of all, when Jeremiah, who was touched with the power of your anointing, he was able to say, your words are like fire shut up in my booth. Oh Lord, we need a new awakening. We need to understand what it means to deny self. It means that we need to honor the call and walk in true godliness and in true obedience. It means that we should be saying to you, Lord, what is it? That you want us to do. What sacrifice. We need. To be making for you. And even if it means. Giving up. The things of the flesh. The things that are weighing us down. The things that causes a besetment. The things that brings about. A total, total separation. Between you and us. Even if it causes us pain. Lord, give us that mind to lay prostrate at your feet and surrender everything to you. You have promised that this church that is militant will become a church that is triumphant. And for us to reach that stage. It means that we have to put on the whole armor of God. It means that we have to make a covenant with you by sacrifice. It means. That even if we are to surrender our lives. To the hands of death. It is something that we as your people should be ready and willing to do. And so, Holy Spirit, I am calling upon you to work in this place. Not only walk up and down in the pew of this sanctuary, but allow hearts that is bowed in your presence. Cry out to you. 
Because we would have seen our failure. We would have recognized our need for you. And realized that today truly is victory day. So give us a total surrender. Give us a spirit to develop, to give up. Give us a spirit to listen to that still small voice. And to be able to say like Samuel's, whatever it is, Lord, your servant is listening. And we will do as you say. We are asking you now that you may stand in this place. Stand beside your servant who will be standing at this lectern. Let power descend from on high. Lift up a standard against the enemy. Let him recognize that he is not welcome here. Because the word of God is about to be proclaimed. Let a special anointing be felt as you transform your servant to speak thus said the Lord. Because the time has come where a decisive change must be experienced in your people. As we surrender ourselves to be transformed by your word today. I pray Lord. For your healing power. To touch those of us who are stiff naked. To touch those of us who are rebelling. To touch those of us who are afflicted. By the temptations of the enemy. And we are striving to hold on to your unchanging grace. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will do an extraordinary work in this place. That finite mind cannot fathom nor even imagine. Because thou art an extraordinary God. And when you work, you do extraordinary things. Prepare each vessel. Every single man has a work to do. And let your word bring about a change today. As it will fall on the hearts of men. And we will cry out, I heed, I heed. I can't hold out any longer. This is your will, O oh God. We will walk therein. Hear, O oh prayer. Answer our call. Go forward and do your work yourself. You are God and you are God alone. You are the undisputed champion. Who can stand before your presence? Let your will be done now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Incline thine ears to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. It is now time to hear another message from the Lord. And the privilege is mine to introduce to us the speaker for today. Our speaker today is no stranger to us. She is one whom is always willing and ready to do the work of the Lord. One who is always ready to go out and encourage someone to come to know more about Jesus. I am speaking of no other than 
Sister Charmaine Williams. She is the one the Lord has prepared to deliver a message to us today. I trust that all of us will lift her up in our prayer so that the Lord will use her as never before to bless our hearts. However, I crave for her your undivided attention. However, before Sister Williams presents God's message to us, we will be blessed with a song of meditation from Sister Dina Reary and company. The next voice you hear will be that of Sister Charmaine Williams.
My Redeemer lives. And that is why I have the privilege to stand before you today. Because my Redeemer lives. it. I want to thank you all today to participate in women igniting their prayer life. I hope and trust that it sends that great urgency that we need to fix our prayer life. I find it, I, I don't know the word to use, but, you know, ladies love to talk, but when it comes on to prayer life, we don't love to pray. And, and this is the best persons of all we need to talk to. Amen. We don't need to wait, and the line will never get busy. And when Thousands, hundreds, millions of persons are praying at the same time. My God, know my name and number. What amazing God we serve. We need to get into the habit of prayer. And so today... Our topic will be igniting your prayer life. This divine, hour, this divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our true knowledge of him who called us by his power own glory and goodness though these he have given us a very great precious promise so that through him you may practice in divine nature have escaped the corrup corruption in the world because of evil desire today I hope I can do justice to the writer because this was handed down by the West Jamaica Conference and I will be presenting it to you today but I want to do justice to the author that write it. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to give you thanks that you have ignited us from morning until now. Yes. At this time, it's no exception, dear Father, because your servant standing before your people. And I, I don't have words to say, but my mouth is already open, need to be used by you. Have your own sweet way, Lord. Do the extraordinary because you know your servant. Have your own sweet way. Baptize us afresh, dear Father. And by the time you would have gone through, all of us heart may ignite in prayer for you. Hear us and answer us as we humble beseech your mercies. In your son's name I pray. Amen. I want to start by introduce something to you. One afternoon, I was visiting with an old friend who was sharing her problem with me. I listened carefully. Afterwards, I, afterward of encouragement, when it appro appropriate, at the end of our time together, she exclaimed, Hi, why don't we pray? It does not hurt anyway. Now, 
typically us. And you will wonder why I am laying so hard on ladies today because we are under the theme women ministry. There are a lot of times we go to talk to others. And while we are talking, we are caught up so much with the problem of the individual or the problem that I am having that I don't even remember to offer a word of prayer. Now, at the end of this conversation, you realize that they would be ending and go away, but something, not one of the individual to say, let us pray. Which means we should have prayed before we begin. And this is where we are getting it wrong many or most of the time. Because when we are going through our problem, we cannot solve it by ourselves. The reality of life is when we are going through our crucibles, we want to know that somebody is there. But we don't want to know that the Holy Spirit is there, Brother Shaw. We want the presence of an individual. Sometimes it's not the best for you to have an individual with you. And I tell you why. Because God has promised us and we need to dwell on the promise that the Lord gave unto us. The Lord promised us that when we are going through the waters, he promised and he is a God that kept his promise. He said that it will not overflow us. What a beautiful promise. So even though I am going through my hard times, my hard time will not get on top of me. But I tell you what, sometimes when I'm going through my crucibles and I would have speak to the individual physically, they would have given me another encouragement. To say, listen, you don't have to stick in this. There is a better way out. But there is no way like the way of Jesus. And we cannot go around him. We cannot do without him. So we are going to end up back right at his feet. So let us begin at his feet. We do regard per this way. Is per just a ritual or practice whenever we have the time for it? What is prayer to you? And this is a rhetorical question. What is prayer to you? Because if prayer is just something that when you need it, you take it. Or, God, me not need you till me in a problem. And, and basically, these are some of the things that we tell God outright. We might not say it in words, but we do it in action. And actions speak louder than word. Sometimes for the entire week we wake up, we haven't prayed. Sometimes for the entire week we pray, but little much. But when we are in our crucibles, our six, seven times, because we need an answer. And we need it now. What does prayer mean to you? Don't forget. 
that without the breath, we are stiff to and dead. And so is prayer. Because prayer is the breath of the soul. Or when we despair, need God help. Prayer is an essential part of our Christian life. Do we believe that? Yes, so said how necessary for we eat food, it's necessary for us to talk to God. Yes. Air is essential to breathe as per in the life. Ellen G. White writes, prayer is necessary for it is the life of the soul Amen. and family prays publicly have their place but it is but it is secret communion with God that sustain the soul. Now, you have times when you have to go publicly and pray. As a family, you, you, you are going publicly to pray. And there are times when you don't need to pray publicly. I, I, I remember one time we were coming from, we, we leave from here, go um, Montego Bay to do ministry. It was Brother Comrie and I. And we leave Westmoreland to Montego Bay. And when our sister Green, Dennis Green too, was there with us. And guess what? When we were coming back, we didn't have any fear. Right. We didn't. Listen, you know. When we were taking the journey, we weren't thinking about fear, you know. We were thinking of the mission that we are going on. So while we were coming back now, we were contemplating where we are going to get fear from to come back. We, we already accomplished the mission where we're going, you know. And we are thinking where we are going to get fear from. So we already talked to the driver and tell him that we have limited amount of fear. So he agrees. So the both of us together, the three of us together, we were praying that, you know, we can't ask the driver for another flavor, a favor. So, Lord, send him to Petersfield. And so, when the driver, he said, who for? Ferris. Nobody answer. Who for waterworks? Nobody answer. And so, when he turned, we said, thank you, Jesus. And like, all, all of us say it at once, you know. So they were wondering, what happened in the bus? And we were there giving praises in the bus. So while we were there giving praises, hear somebody, shout it out. You know, long more say hallelujah. It's like they are afraid to say hallelujah in the bus. So sometimes when you pray, it gives others courage to do it. And we weren't doing it because we were boasting that we can pray or we can shout hallelujah. We were doing it because we sincerely appreciate what the Lord has done for us. Sometimes you're at a place and you say, hallelujah. And you remember saying, I'm not church today, you know. Because that moment call for you to give praises. But don't hold it back, brethren. Don't hold it back. Once it comes, shout it. Don't hold back. The great farm, farmer, Luther, Martin Luther, concurred to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So if you are a Christian, this is what Martin Luther is saying. If you are a Christian and you are not praying, 
It's like you don't have any breath to breathe. So what are you? Mm? If you are not breathing life, what are you breathing? Think about it. So we need to ignite our prayer life. Thus, Christ himself ignite us to seek him. Come to me, all you that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So don't worry about your problem. Sometimes I pride in a verse where we want somebody to talk to. Because we have the greatest person of all persons right at our hand. Hmm? But because we want a little comfort from others, we seem to tell others. Don't get me wrong, we need others because there is no man an island by themselves. But God read our motives. And motives can be very dangerous. So don't get me wrong that you don't need each other. We do need each other. At times. So here we are. Just thinking. The Lord give us the privilege to come to him individually in prayer. Amen. So we don't have to go to the priest anymore. No, hmm? What would I not think if me have to go, go tell the priest all of what me do? Yes, no. hmm? Me have to go tell the priest all of what me do. And then him tell Jesus what me do before me can get forgiveness. That's why I am happy that he said me can come boldly so why we are afraid? Even Wednesday night, Virgin Letter, we have two prayers. Can an apple. You are not praying to anybody that are here. What is prayer? A sincerity of the heart. And what is on your heart, just deliver it. Just deliver what on your heart. If anybody don't want to hear it, tough luck for you. But this is what is inside. Need to come out. Unburden. Unburdening our problems to him. Ellen G. White described it is this way. Prayer, prayer is the open of our heart to God as to a friend. So how we can talk to some friends so every second and even when the, somebody is up here presiding, you are talking to your friend and when it comes to prayer, you are elect. You have more things to say to your friend than God? No, brethren. You're supposed to have more to say to God than your friend. Because Sister Lisa, you know, so if you tell me something, I'm going to tell you my best friend. Uh, and Brother Shaw, my best friend. So, I'm going to tell Brother Shaw. And I say, Brother Shaw, no, say nothing, you know. But Brother, Brother Shaw have another best friend. So, I'm going to tell him, best friend, if you do the same thing, no talk. But Brother Shaw, best friend, have another best friend. So you never know. And by you know it, the entire church know what you just tell me. But I have a friend. I have a friend in Jesus. That I tell all of my troubles and my burdens. And guess what? You not tell Brother Sha. Before and tell Brother Shah, he give me solution. And give me solution. 
And probably the solution that he give me, I know the one where me did I look for. Because right. me I look for somebody if you tell me, say, you know, say, you want Lisa wicked. In wicked, guy shouldn't tell you that. Me I look for the one there. But the Lord said, sis, you have to go through great tribulation in order to be my child. I discovered the fruit of the spirit that we want some of the spirit, but not all of it. The fruit of the spirit, we want joy. Peace, happiness. Patient can stay for a while. L long suffering, no for company. Hmm? Talk to me, no brethren, because the truth is, you know, we don't, we, 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 these are the things where me, me want something to happen right now, and you're going to tell me if you're patient. Have faith when my faith is going to multiply. Because I need it. No. And we are living in a world today that we don't decide to wait. We need it and we need it. No. And even in our prayer to God, we want the thing to happen and happen. No. So not give me no patience. Not give me no faith. Not give me no long suffering because once me start suffer, that means God no member me. You know, remember, so God got you suffering too. In fact, I never remember him. Hmm? When he weird come down upon him, he say, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. That to show you how much came down on him. You and I can't handle. We are fierce little of that. No half, you know, just a little. And we can't manage. So listen. We are going. We are going somewhere because we are going to reach somewhere today. Yes. We are going to reach somewhere today in our prayer life. Prayer is, prayer is an open of the heart to God. As to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are. But in order to enable us to receive him. You can't tell God nothing away no more. But he won't hear it from you anyhow. So if you're a liar, God already know that. But you see, one time we don't want to acknowledge that we are a liar. We say, God forgive me for my sin. Which one? Acknowledge the one. So that he can work on it. And help you to, to go through it. And this is why we have to tell him. He knows, but we have to tell him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but bring us up to God. And I must tell you this, brethren, that the Lord not going to come down to our level yes. again. So get it right. Get it right, brethren. God is not going to come down to our level anymore. He already humbled himself and come down to the lowest that a human could ever go. No man down here have gone so low. So now is the time for us to meet him where he is. And he, he make it reachable for every human being on planet earth. It was very difficult for him. But he make it easy for all of us. So if you don't make it, it's no one fault but mine. Jesus... Jesus treasured his power while he was on earth. The gospel records numerous occasions when Christ spent many hours communicating 
with God, seeking strength for his heavenly father, from his heavenly father to meet challenges of his work and mission. So if you believe, say, you can go through your trial by yourself, think again. Jesus is a part of the Godhead, but yet he has to depend on his father. He hasn't done anything without consulting his father. So how me and you take up things on our head? Who are we to take up things on our head? Even coming on planet earth to die for man, he didn't come by himself. He has to consult his father. But we be God and God. Because we say we are our own man. And we are our own woman. So we do as we please. Check again brethren. There are numerous times you would have missed Jesus. And he would in some secret place brother Shaw. Talking to his father. I remember early years, I'm not doing it again, and I don't know what is happening to my prayer life. It needs to be ignited. Because earlier years, when I just came into the Seventh-day Adventist church, there are times when we're gone in a bush for the entire day. We go by the seaside, and we are enjoying nature and speaking to God. We go past some mountain top, brethren, and, 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 and they're talking to God, agonizing with God. And guess what? Then they said it better than today. I wish I could go back to those days. I, I don't know what is happening in my prayer life today because those communion I don't have anymore. Be a nice and all kind of something in my head. Sometimes when you I kneel down to pray, all kind of music start playing in my head. Different, different, different something start here inside of my brain. You see, the more you take nature walk and talk to God, and the more your brain clear. And I'm telling you from experience. And the more you talk to God and feel him near you, and the more you want to suck on upon him. You, 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 you wonder why we are behaving like this because we are not sucking on upon God, brother Shah. He at a distance from us. And I need to rekindle my prayer life. There are days we would have, even, even bluefields, we, we would go inside of the bush and go up in our cool place, well cold and. We were there praying, praying, brethren. When you, when, 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 when you have that day, day and you come back, you feel like you just want to translate. You don't want to sin. You don't want nothing to touch you. Try one of their experiences and come back and tell me. All right. uh, that is it. That's the key. Matthew tell us, after he, this may, him he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray later that night he was there alone Jesus was there by himself we need to wake up some other midnight by ourselves and go under the mango tree or under one of the tree, the inner your yard and start to pray. We are not living in a, any soft, nice, warm time. Remember, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. 
And we are in a war and you can't afford to in a war and take your war lightly. If you go in a war and say, look here, it's just another war. So Jesus spent all those times alone. Luke would have given you, no, give you another record where he said, one of these days, Jesus went out on the mountainside to pray and spend the night praying. All night. When we pray all night, we have problem. And sleep or kill, we can't organize with God. Mark would have given us another account. And let me tell you the account that Mark gave. He said, very early in the morning, while we were still, while it was still dark, Jesus go out, left his house, and went off, went off to a solid place where he prayed. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke. All of these examples of Jesus. When, la when last we have a prayer life by ourselves? When last we get up and pray all night? Think about it. Think about it. My, 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 my granddaughter, she, she and my husband start tease me. She said that grandma get up and you say hallelujah, praise the Lord. And she pray for all the dog. Yes. And then see them prayer they are keep. Because they take it for a joke, Bridget. Listen to me. You know, feel so them feel say Jesus did a go off my head when time him find them place they are praying. You never believe so? And people have all kind of things to say to say about him. And that is why they couldn't really believe that he really is the Messiah. All right, all right. And I depend upon prayer, sir. That to show you how much we need it. Without our blood, we are dead persons. So without prayer, we are stiff to and dead. You wonder why we come in a church and say amen? We don't have no life. And a dead man cannot praise God. Amen. But the truth is, if I should walk down the aisle and ask each and every person what the Lord has done for you, you will tell me. Hmm? Then if he has done something for you. Not even thanks. And the reality about life, you know, if Brother Shah, if me come to your house and labor, do everything for you, me expect you to say thank you. And you say if you don't say thank you. Sure. You know what the thing, Brother Shah? You know what the thing, Brother Shah? And me have all reason for it because you could have at least say thanks. At least thanks. But only God could be God. God is God, God. Do you know that God is listening for us to say thank you? He loved when you appreciated him. He loved that. Find the time to say thanks. Indeed, prayer is power. Prayer ignite the spiritual life. And that is what I am sharing with you. That when you have a prayer life, you feel that you want to be translated. It uplift your life. And guess what? When you have a prayer life, brethren, you have a connection. When our prayer ignites a flame, they can impact our lives and families and all those around us. 
extreme, four ways that prayer can ignite our prayer life. I tell you one. After accepting Jesus in our lives, the Apostle Paul reminds us, therefore, if any man in Christ is a new born creature. Amen. So guess what? The old things that we used to do, they're supposed to be gone. It should be gone. But unfortunately, sometimes, oh, oh, it said we are walking in newness of life. You, 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 you know what, what the baptism signify? Death, burial, and resurrection. So if you are not ready for that, you are not ready for baptism. Because when you go down in that water, you should leave everything that is unlike Christ down there. Everything that is unlike Christ, leave it down there. Because when you get up back, and, and, and I, <laughs> I was at a baptism, and, 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 and this man, he have a habit of smoking. And, and while he was in the water, even the very day that he was going to baptize, he has a cigarette in his pocket. It is so hard to give up. Like many of us. Because sin is not so easily that's way the worst the one that i love you love the cherished wonder we have to be careful and so he has it in his top pocket and and while he go down in the water the pastor was doing the baptism and he got down in the water the cigarette flew out and they said hey hey mr c i have some instead that enough for me a few man were buried down there and I was happy that he could have said that it's for the man who buried down there. Because the man who buried down there have that dirty habit. But the man that rise up afresh don't have that dirty habit. As child of God, we should bury some things. Hmm? Bad habit, dirty mind, corruption should have buried down there. Hatred, malice buried down there. Listen, if we have all of these things, you know, it's a burden. So we can't praise God how we praise Him. How me for praise God when me can't hug sister Lumley? Can't praise God. And as me come in through the door and me see somebody when me not like. Yeah. Me see sister Fiesi and well, lo and behold him at the Sabbath school. Me just feel for go back home in my yard. Because I know him for the Sabbath school come, in, I come here for see him. And, and, and even me take a big heart and come inside of the church me talk, talk come in our here. What about if a, if a sister fears a God sin if he can't reconcile my heart? Me now go get it. Me now go get it. Because guess what? Me now listen what she has say. So how me all get it? Who me all get it from? And God determined see how me have to get it from. You cannot choose for God. And God do something sometimes you wonder. Why he do that? But God's ways are not my ways. And neither my ways or his ways. It's either we work with him or we leave him alone. But decide our mind who 
we are going to follow. Because if we take the oath, the vow that, listen. Hallelujah. I'm going to follow my Savior all the way. God never promised us a smooth road. So if you come inside the church and ready for a smooth road, you are at the wrong place. Pack your bag. We are here to go through hills and valleys. It's not easy when you are going through your valleys, you know, brethren. Because I went through some storm at a day in my life. And guess what? You know what I end up start taking? Stress pill. Because I was stressed out. Not until I got down on my knees with my father and I tell you about the situation and what happened. I end up start taking stress tablets. This is nothing that God wants me to end up into. I'm not coming to the podium. It's my time to preach. I have to find somebody to preach because if it's not right, it's just not right. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you something that is not right. When I'm coming to God, I must come to him with a clean hand and a pure heart. And so I dare and I struggle through because I need to get on top of the mountain. I don't have no problem in the valleys because I said to the Lord, God, if this is what you want me to go through, give me the strength. Don't take it away. I ask him sincerely, don't take it away from me. Because I need this valley experience in order for me to go on the mountain top. But many of us don't want to stay in the valley. Everything for run smooth. It won't happen that way, brethren. If it didn't happen to Jesus, it won't happen to you. You will have rough time in your Christian journey. But it's only to make you a pure goal for tomorrow. And if you don't have this experience in your life, pray for some. Pray for some. Because you need it. You know, sometimes you're there and believe you're strong in the Lord. And you feel say, if God should have come now or any adversary, if any problem or struggles or Sunday law come, you can't feel it becoming strong enough. And some look at something turning over. You realize that you are no match. Hmm? Your struggle is not my struggle and my struggle is not your struggle. But at the end of the day, all of us that are in here are struggling. Amen. So why should I look at you like all of us are struggling. Some are struggling over anger. Some are struggling over malice. Some are struggling over lie. Some are struggling over spiritual wickedness. But all of us are struggling. And that is why we are here at the hospital. You didn't know that you are in a hospital? And I'm going to sick people come to the hospital. So if you never sick, you wouldn't come here today. Because it's Person when I'm sick, no need no medication. So this is not the place for you. We need, we need healing. That's why we are here today. But I must share something with you. If you don't see yourself as a sick individual, you will not receive any healing. If you see yourself better than the doctor that are attending to you, 
you will not get any healing. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I, brethren, if you see me get some passionate, brethren, it's because I know where the Lord has taken me from. I know where I am. It's not an easy task for, for us to come out pure gold. There are times when you climb the ladder and you feel that there is just a few more steps and I will finish the ladder. You drop right back down to the bottom. You have to start all over again. It's not an easy task. On every pledge card, it said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can't do it by ourselves. And we are not independent by ourselves. We are dependers. We have to depend on the Lord. We need our Heavenly Father to help us in our spiritual walk and our battle against the devil. Thus, communion with God is highly ex essential for spiritual health so that we can change us to become more loving, more compassionate, more mission-focused, to reach others. Amen. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus used the example of Saul and salt and light. And this is two precious commodity. He salt and light. He explained to his disciple and all the listeners how to follow, follow on. All the listeners, how his followers ignite and change around about. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. As Christian, we all are salt of the earth. Does the world feel our saltiness? It's a question to us. Because we have to taste a little salt in our intake. And if we do everything that we do without salt, then our body is not complete. Something is still wrong. And if we take in too many salt, something is still wrong. So we need to balance our prayer life. So we remember that we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt lose its saltiness, how it be made salt again? It is no longer good for anything except to throw out and shred it under your foot. So if you lost your purpose, you don't have no more use. And all of us born with a purpose. So we need to know the purpose that we are on planet Earth for. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither, does, neither do the people light a Light a lamp and put a light lamp under and put it, it under a bowl. Instead, they put it under the stand. So instead of you put it in the little circle there, the bowl, you would have put it under here where you can give the light and give it light to everyone in the house. 
In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see the good deeds and glorify your Father. You should never tell someone that you are a Christian. Never. Because if you are living that Christ-like, there is no need to ask if you are a Christian. Because you are the light. You are the light. And guess what? Many times the world shines brighter than us. Hmm? Serious. It may be sad to say. When we should be shining to show those that are in darkness the light. Because those persons are in darkness. They haven't come to the light yet. But yet they are pattern, uh, their pattern we are take. So we're darker than them, brethren. Light not reach you yet. Because if, if, if the both of us buck up in a club, how can I minister to him? Hmm? What can I say to that individual? When the two of us have the same conversation, how can I switch to tell him about Jesus? Hmm? When the two of us look the same way, how can I tell him not to do it? Hmm? And I'm doing the same thing, so how can I tell him not to? Children live what they learn. I remember one morning, and I was there praying. And, and I said, time is going, so I have to get up and, and, and go look for breakfast, the sin of the... Ch and my son said, Mommy, so you yeah, tell me if you pray and you get up. I, I, I just turned back and kneeled down. Because they are living what they learn. Today, Jesus asks us to be salt as well as light. His vision is that we ignite and change by bringing the light into the darkness. No, this is very profound, Virgin. Jesus said that we must bring the light into the darkness. So why we are taking one in the dark, come in the light? Are we for bringing light to them? But the world has set a trend for us, you know. The world has set a trend for us. Uh, you know, just this week, me just start smile to myself. I am not mad, but when me see fashion, we don't have a me, I say, look here, you know. If the world says short clothes, I hit a weird come to church. If the world says baby doll, I hit a weird come to church. And if the world says long clothes, I hit a weird come to church. And if the world says a short sleeve, I hit a weird come to church. So who set it train? The who set it train? The I want to dress me, I look, you know. And all of them, something you are playing on my mind. If you find one nice long dress, it's so calm, calm, make you breathe. If you find a nice long skirt, the whole of your panty there, though. But the world not pattern nothing for you, for your church. The world not making anything at all for the church. But the church find themselves in it. If we are the true light, if we are the true light, this will never happen. This vision is that we ignite our change by bringing light into the darkness and the salt to bring a taste of God into the world. He is asking that we would be known by the light. We would bring a shining into the community and by how we live as salt in the circle of influence. 
So as ladies, me tell you earlier on this morning that we have a lot of influence. What do we do with it? Hmm? What do we do with the influence that we have? Do we use it for Jesus? Use it, influence others for Jesus? Or we just keep it because we have it? Hmm? Today, we are igniting for a brand new change. And as from today, we are going to know our true purpose inside the community. As we seek to be a light to the communities around us, we can pray to God to open doors for us to see the needs of the communities and help us find a way we can serve them. It's more than one way we can help the community in the bridge. You think I'm going to just give them money? So? As Elder said this morning, Jesus never gave away any money. He didn't have it indeed. But what he have, he give. And give it unreservedly. So listen me now. Me can tidy up house. This is what all I can do. Me I do it. So every person when me see in need of that for done, me just go there and me go do it. With nothing in return, nothing inside me, my, in the back of my brain. Me do it because me have the love there. Yes. Pray, 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 pray. And I can't overemphasize that. Can ignite change in us. So once we constantly on our knees, we will see change. Amen. You wonder why some of our country cannot resolve? We are not praying enough. If we have negative attitude and prejudice towards the race, our nationalities, God cannot change us into salt or light. When our cup is full, there is no space for God. So we have to empty ourselves today. So the prejudice that we have against one another, the negative attitude that we have towards one another, we have to throw it away. We have to throw it away. Sometimes we say, I saw it, Tana, I can't get rid of it. And also, your turn, God never make you so. God made all of us with positive attitude. It devil push up in ugly head down, but we have negative attitude. Because some of the most of the attitude that we have coming from the pit of hell. Can we now save with it? We are not going to save with it. So, where we are going with it? Thank you, Brother Shaw. Thank you. David pray earnestly to God. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renewed a, a steadfast spirit within me. David continued to pray and ask God to grant him a will, a willing spirit, which all of us should be asking for at this time. Willing spirit. Because some of us are very unwilling. Very much unwilling. And we are not only unwilling to our fellow brethren. We are unwilling to God. God asks us to serve and we say, Me na. What do you mean by you na? What do you mean by you now? You, you ever, he, he ever speak to you and tell us, go and do that. I can't go over there, so why you can't? There are many times if we listen to that still small voice that speak to us, we would make better choice in life. But because... Need to throw it away, brother Shaw. You need to throw it away. I want to close with you today. 
I, I really want to close with you today. But I cannot close until I touch a little bit about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul who had suffered, beaten, imprisonment, persecution, remind us that everything that is written in the past was written to teach us so, so that through the enhanced thought, everything that to the enhanced thought in the scripture and encouragement they provide we mighty hope. So if we live after all of what we would have read in the Bible, we will have mighty hope. I don't know who is coming to sing for us today. But I can tell you, Paul writing is very difficult to understand in the Bible, but I love the reading of Paul. Because Paul would have gone through a lot in his Christian journey. There are many a times he would have been beaten, not for his sake. He has been ridiculed. Not for his sake. But as Christian, we don't want to go through anything. As persons talk to us, our heart is in a, coming out of our chest. And we, we like persons to talk mild to us. There are times when Jesus himself not talk to us mild either. What are you going to do? Jeep up Jesus? Bex with Jesus. Hmm? Jesus himself did face you, you know. You never know that. There are times when Jesus has to talk to us in some manner for us to understand what he's really saying to us. But Paul, he took all of this. Paul knew that the last of him is to, is to face Nero. He wasn't guilty because Nero himself burned down the place. But he was accused. And Paul did not strive to make himself clear that it's not me. In our Christian journey, we will find some things come upon us. We know that we are not guilty. The Lord knows that we are not guilty. So we don't have to beat our stomach with anybody. But we need to do the right. We need to do the right thing. And so once you are doing the right thing, the Lord will reward you. And as soon as Paul get in front of Nero, he could have made up his mind before he reached there and said that I have fight a good fight. I have kept the faith. How many of us inside this church today can say we have truly kept the faith. And I know that there is a crown waiting for me. How many of us today? We need to keep on fighting the good fight of salvation. Brother Shaw. Call me sin. No lost and lonely Jesus blood can make you free 
for receive the worst among you when he sees a wretch like me and I know yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner free and I know yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner free in temptation he is near you have the power for hell and pain guide you to the path of safety and give you grace for every day sing virgin and i know yes i know jesus blood can make the vilest sinner free and i know yes i know Jesus blood can make the vilest sinner free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It will never lose. It will never lose is power. I am here to make an appeal today, and I am making a very serious appeal. The appeal that I am making is for us to ignite our prayer life. And if you are not ready to ignite your prayer life, do not stand. Do not stand. Because we need persons that are very serious in the business of Christ. So if you are ready to ignite your prayer life, let me see you stand. Let me see you stand if you are ready to ignite your prayer life. And if you want to have a closer walk with Jesus, just come at the altar. You are ready to ignite your prayer life and you want to have a closer walk with him? Just come a little closer to him. Elder, you are not a lady today, but you are the shepherd of the flock. So we are calling you today to pray for us as women that we be united that we can tear down the stronghold of the enemy I want you to pray today for the ladies to be obedient I want you to pray today that the ladies will have respect to each other so each lady will respect each one so that we can get somewhere am I right because if I try to disrespect you, I'm disrespecting myself. So we want to have respect for each other. Brother Shah, meanwhile, you are just singing the chorus. Elder P is making his way to come up here. I ask the ladies to spend a second to tell God, as from today, what they want to do with him. Jesus' blood can make you free For receive the worst among you When he saved a wretch like me And I know, yes I know 
Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner free. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner free. Before I offer the prayer, I just want to say something. Uh, all of us were true, is that so? All of us were true. Yes. And I was watching a show, a plane in the air, moving to its high destination and it was hijacked it was hijacked uh, the amount of fluid that was in it was not to leave out of the state it was to remain into the state but the hijacker say he want to go far into another place the pilot said unto him we all are going to perish because the amount of fluid I have cannot go that distance. The hijacker said he not care if the plane is crashed once he obedience to him. That's the hijacker, that old devil. He not care if you are perish. He doesn't care if the plane is crashed once he want to have his own way. The message have gone straight. Honestly and truly, I would like to see somebody here who holds up his or her hand inside this congregation here today who could truly tell me that his prayer life is not changed. Our prayer life is changed. We are not praying as we are to. And the amount of prayers that we have to do, we are certainly running out of flow here. And, and I, I say I have to watch the show. Uh, what the pilot had was to do is to call for help from other planes and so on because he knew that the, place is going to, the plane is going to crash. So, what he did was to have boats and so on to stand by. That when the plane hits the water, then something is there to rescue. Not all, some of the passengers. Many are going to die. Why am I saying this? The message has gone for us to ignite our prayer life. The plane is running out of fluid. The Holy Spirit is standing by to secure some of the passengers, but not all of them. But I prayed uh, that we all who are in this circle make ourselves available to be on the first trip out. Amen. What I say about that? A message went straight today and it was clear. Let us, by God's grace, bow our heads as we pray. O oh God and our Father, we chart in heaven. Uh, this congregation here with your people can truly say we are guilty. We are guilty that we are not praying as we are to. And some of us, if we are truthful to ourselves, we don't pray at all. There are some people that stand in here, even into this congregation, who could truly say, I have not prayed for the week begin. But we are still alive. 
And when I talk about prayer, I am not talking about considering a prayer in your life. I'm talking about praying. And sometimes we not even have find time to pray when we are going to our bed. And sometimes we get up in the morning, we never melt down and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. We are the keeper of our own selves. We run in and we run out. If we get our food, we nothing say, thank you, Lord. We pass it through so many crucibles and so many accidents that just pass off our hand. And sometimes we boast upon our own skill. Instead of saying, it's the Lord who delivers us. Amen. We are in a certainly a real problem. You are a shame of us today. While the devil is rejoicing. But our great God, something will have to come. And the end of everything will have to be made. And somewhere along the line, we have to meet our final destination. What our destination today is that we are inclined unto your words. And we continue to end up in rebellion. Certainly, the devil is working over time on our ladies. Certainly, the devil have them at full scale. Certainly, many men are being trapped under the wings of ladies. Certainly, is not today it is happening. Certainly, the first woman in that was made allowed the man to be trapped under her influence. Certainly, when you send out a message to the men, sons of God, and tell them uh, that they are to be careful of the daughters of men, certainly they put themselves into a position and would have drawn away the sons of God. Certainly, Abraham was influenced by Sarah. And we can come all the way down. And certainly you say, as it was into the days of Noah, so shall it be into the coming of the Son of Man. Men have lost their ways because of entrapped with woman's danger. Certainly the women that are here today realizing that they are a very powerful influence. They knew that. Is there any hope? Yes, there is hope. Certainly, the Bible tells us that there are some women that are called holy. There are some women that are called righteous. There are some women that are called... And even the time into which you were about to born, you did not born from a man. You are born from a woman. The scripture says that the angels walked over the land and see a woman among women. Certainly even in our midst today, we can have all the women here are being women among the other women that are part of the world. I'm asking the Heavenly Father to be with them and bless them. And strengthen them as they go from day to day. And help them so that they will look back into their lives. And realize that they are a chosen vessel for you. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the messenger. It's so good that some of the points that she bring out is not a man. It was a woman. Certainly to say that there are women in our world today who are still conscious. I'm asking the Heavenly Father to breathe a breath of release upon your people today so that they can be stalwart men and women for tomorrow. Bless the church, we pray. Empower us with your love. Sanctify us through your truth. Give us the full understanding and help us, Lord, so that we will walk in fear and honor and glory 
We prayed for Jesus' sake.